What's going on everybody? I'm Patrick from Powax and this video is an excerpt from the complete 2019 Penn State offense video and so this one is going to cover the 141 wing picks offense. Before we get started, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Powlax, where you can download and print the playbook PDF that accompanies this and over 50 other Powlax videos by becoming a patron and supporting this channel. The goal for this channel is to put out free, in-depth lacrosse coaching content for coaches and players to access anytime, anywhere. The first aspect of the Penn State offense that we're going to go over is the 141 wing picks offense. And so essentially what we're going to have is two wing pairs that are going to be running their two-man game on either side they'll start it. They'll either start on the right side or the left side. Usually they did start it on the left side, but then you have your two other players who are up top and at X and they're going to play. And the most important part of this offense is that Mac O'Keefe is on the left side and Grant Ament is on the right side. And so when either of these players were involved in the pick, it created extremely hard situations because every team scouted them and they didn't want to switch off of them. And either one of these players is going to destroy any short stick matchup. So usually a player with a short stick matchup would start off on this left side and he would start with the ball. Then we'd have a player up top and then a player on the backside. Then finally, we're gonna have a player that's gonna kind of play hang up games right here. And so as they created the formation that they liked, Penn State would use a big little matchup by putting a short stick on the midi here, and then obviously the long stick on O'Keefe. And now as they played within this two man game, they would discourage the switch off of O'Keefe or Amet because those two were extremely dangerous. And so within this example, we've got a video of this player coming through, you know, dodging underneath, and they wouldn't even slide off of O'Keefe, and O'Keefe would just mirror to the top. But so a lot of times this player would just get open within the two-man game because they were scared to slide off of Ament or O'Keefe. Before we get started, if you are following along on a PDF, we are going to go through every single actual example that the PDF has. So if you are following along on that PDF, you're going to go to the second page, and we are mostly going to be working left to right from top to bottom as you usually would. So as we get to this highlight, the ball is passed from back left to side left, and you can see the players get into their 1-4-1 formation. They are a little bit offset on the backside, but they are utilizing the same principle. So we're going to get a two-man game with the player here and O'Keefe on the crease. And now as we run the play and the Dodger is trying to make multiple moves to beat his man, notice how the player will show off of O'Keefe, won't slide, which allows him time to get in underneath his defenseman and score. Now, if this is not Mac O'Keefe and they don't fear sliding away from him, I feel like this player gets doubled on his double move, but here they don't slide off of him. In this next clip, we get a better representation of our 141 offense. You can see the players are set up in their 141, and now we have Grant Ament on the crease. And now we're going to really see how the defensive players do not want to slide off of Grant Ament as well. So as Jack Kelly starts his dodge going underneath, the defenseman shows. Jack Kelly uses a really awesome little backhand pump here to keep the defenseman away. And I'm going to show this again really quick. Notice how after Jack Kelly face dodges over, he keeps his stick in his right hand and he throws a nice little pump fake back up towards Amit. That's what keeps the defenseman away from him. And this allows him to use a double move, roll back, and shoot around a screen to score. So now once they didn't slide off of Amit or O'Keefe, then they ended up actually switching on to an off. And so the, the example we have with O'Keefe is he comes out, he sets his pick, this player comes over the top, and then as these players switch, O'Keefe just kind of abuses his short stick matchup because now he has a player here, the player kind of tries to lock him off, he back cuts him, and then they have a nice easy feed inside. And so anytime that a short stick ended up on O'Keefe, he ended up usually making him pay with uh, some kind of off-ball movement where he would cut, whereas Ament, once a defensive midi switched onto him, he would usually just dice him up with more of a dodging emphasis. In our first clip, we set up our one for one Mac O'Keefe sets an up pick on the left side, and then he generates the switch. Once the switch has been generated, the short stick defenseman is going to try to deny the pass to O'Keefe. 
This makes him come out way too far. Mac O'Keefe cuts behind him, accepts a feed, and finishes. Now, as we show another angle of this play, I want to talk about how Mac O'Keefe presents his stick to catch the ball. He presents his stick in front of himself because the defenseman is behind him. If he tries to catch this on his collarbone instead of leading with the head of his stick, this play is never made. But here, he presents his stick in front, accepts it across his body like an over-the-shoulder catch in football, and then immediately turns his stick shoots and scores in our next clip amen actually starts with the ball and he is going to dodge jack kelly comes to set the pick he sets a really nice pick and grant amen runs him off of it generating the switch now with the short stick matchup everyone else pretty much clears out of the way and allows grant amen to go to work the short stick defenseman does a pretty good job of defending amen until he decides to try to chase his stick he gets beat and amen scores so now in the event that one of the first picks didn't work, they would either repick the same side or they would move it to the backside and pick that opposite side. So we'll get into the motions that they'll have backside, but one of the motions that they have is an exchange. But so as the pick is coming on here and he comes through and then over the top and they slip and they run their two man game. If nothing comes out of this two man game, they will throw it to the other side and then they will immediately run picks on the opposite side as well. And so if this hadn't have worked on this side and then O'Keefe kind of popped out, they can also pass it back to themselves and then re-pick the same side. Now, they can also refuse pick, they can do all kinds of other things within the actual two-man game, but if the pick doesn't work on one side, they can either run it again on the opposite side or this side. And just because these two players haven't moved yet doesn't mean that they won't move. I just wanted to make sure we isolated how the two-man games would work and flow first before getting into the off-ball movement. In this first clip, we're going to show how if the first pick does not generate any type of look, we can immediately throw back and pick again. We don't end up scoring off the pick here. The goal actually comes after throwing to X, but it gives you an idea of how the players can just continue to play out the set. So they set up their 1-4-1. One one. Mac O'Keefe moves out to set the pick, and nothing is generated. He does a great job of getting through. Player steps away, throws to Mac O'Keefe. Now they're going to pick again. And so as the second pick doesn't generate anything and Mac O'Keefe moves up top, now as the ball is passed to the left side, another player comes in to complete their 1 for one So now as this player just mirrors up, the ball is passed to X. And now with the defenseman hung up, this player just curls the left side and scores. In the next clip, we once again start with a pick on the left side. This one is now an up pick. The defenseman defending O'Keefe shows towards the ball, and so the ball is thrown back up to O'Keefe and then immediately over to the other side, where Ament receives a pick, drives hard off of it, and scores. So now we're going to go through some of the off-ball concepts that the players that aren't involved in the two-man game would utilize. So if the two-man game is going on here, we've got a couple other players who are going to run their motions. And so we'll go over the other pair first, and then we'll go through the player up top and the player at X. So the first thing that we have on the backside is just an easy exchange. And so sometimes they will just switch places. They can have a pick here. They can run mumbos. They can basically switch places. But the most important aspect of these two players most often was that they would separate and they would get to the backside pipe and pretty much even with the pipe or the outside of the crease and about eight to 10 yards. And as they did that, if they drew any of the defensemen in here playing either Ament or Jack Kelly or whoever this was, once they drew a player, because these players had separated, then it was pretty easy to find passes through. Now, the player up top, his job can be twofold. He can either fade or he can cut the middle through. And so most often, if the play was happening on the right side of the field where either Ament had the ball or you know Jack Kelly did or they were picking with Ament, a lot of times O'Keefe would want to float up top and so the player up top would cut the middle. And so depending on the side, they would have certain specific reads for specific players, but for the most part, his job is either to fade or to cut the middle. These guys are gonna exchange and separate. They can also turn and pick for each other. And then at X, he's going to basically play hang-up games. So let's say as this starts, he'll start in the first five, which is the first five after GLE. And so let's say his defenseman is here. And as the play happens, he'll kind of sneak to the backside. And what he's doing is if this guy decides to show towards the ball, he's gaining a step in case 
as the ball comes down and then is passed to him, he can now push the backside. And so in some cases, the defenseman will then kind of hang himself up and they'll be able to sit back and then look through and try to feed. But in other cases, he'll just kind of either have a step and basically cause bad approaches by the defenseman by using the goal as a pick. Now, the important part about all of this is that the picks generated looks for the off-ball players and the off-ball players generated looks for the picking players. So isolating one instance within the concept of the Penn State offense doesn't really work because every time one group scored, they opened up space for the other group and they really worked well in tandem to do this. And now let's take a look of some of the goals that they scored off-ball. In the first two clips, we're going to show how the backside exchange plus separation of players does a great job to isolate one player backside off ball once another player tries to help the ball. So in our first clip, this is my favorite because it shows the IQ of off ball play, especially by Grant Amen. So we start with a pick on the left side of the field. As the pick happens, the two backside exchange and separate. And as we freeze it here, we see this player inside who is moving to try to slide towards the pick. Then we see this backside player who has to split these two. Grant Ament sees that he is coming towards him, points towards the other player, and the ball is then passed through to the backside and they score an easy goal. In our next clip, essentially the same thing is going to happen, but we're also going to have a short stick who moves to play Mac O'Keefe. So the ball gets to the right side, we start our pick, the backside pair exchanges and then separates. And because the long stick inside stays and the two backside defensemen essentially switch, that puts the short stick on O'Keefe and he cuts through to take advantage of that matchup. Now, because he cut through, this isolates this defenseman as the only defenseman who could slide. He does slide, which leaves this player wide open, who accepts a feed and finishes. In our next set of highlights, we are going to show Mac O'Keefe, who will float out the backside to the top in order to take his time and room shot. So the ball moves to the right side of the field. Grant Amon is just going to mirror, no pick. The player who's top center is going to cut through. The backside player moves to the backside pipe. This pulls players away from Mac O'Keefe. The ball is fed to him, and he takes a time and room shot from about 15 yards. In this next clip, pretty much the exact same thing is going to happen. Amet comes to set a pick this time. The player top center cuts through. Backside player cuts to the backside pipe. O'Keefe floats out and then towards the ball, accepts a feed, and snipes a corner from just inside 15 yards. In our final set of clips, we're going to show how players will play hang-up games with their defensemen and then take advantage of whatever the on-ball defenseman is going to do. In our first clip, the play starts on the left side of the field. The player dodges underneath. Mac O'Keefe is going to mirror. And now as this defenseman shows towards the ball, the ball is passed to Amen at X, which hangs up the defenseman. Amen bobbles the ball, which incentivizes the defenseman to go out to play him. Amen then catches it. The defenseman has a bad approach. And then Amen's all alone to curl the right side and score. In our next clip, it looks a little jumbled before you can kind of see the 1-4-1 take place. You see it here. And now as this player dodges underneath, the defenseman who is playing the player at X gets hung up again as the ball is passed to X. And now this player has time to look through the defense. The off-ball defensemen aren't matched up, which leaves the top center player open. He cuts through the middle, receives a pass, and scores. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section. If you'd like to download the playbook PDF that corresponds to this video, you can get that at patreon.com slash palax by clicking this link up here in the corner and becoming a patron for as little as $1. This will be a part of the $5 tier. Essentially, once you become a patron, you get access to over 50 playbook PDFs that I have that correspond to this and a bunch of other videos. And I really do appreciate all of the support that I've received, especially all of the people who have maintained their patronage throughout the summer. I know it's kind of a weird thing having a, co a lacrosse coaching site that you don't necessarily use all the time, especially once the season ends. But I really do appreciate everyone for, you know, supporting through the off season because that's when I get most of my stuff done anyway. Um, also, thank you to all the people who supported in the spring and then, you know, dropped it. Like it's really awesome to, you know, see how many people are willing to support content for the sport. So thank you guys all for that. Uh, final thing is follow Palax and Palax Master Coach on Facebook and Instagram. Have a good one. I will see you guys in the next video.